fishing, just fishing, fishing, just fishing. Chicken jerks, chicken jerks, chicken jerks, fish. Chicken jerks, chicken jerks, just fishing. Chicken jerks, chicken jerks, chicken jerks, fish. Chicken jerks, chicken jerks, just fishing. Chicken jerks, chicken jerks, chicken jerks, fish. Chicken jerks. Kelly took it from me. But what is today, James? Happy birthday. Happy birthday to James. No, he's gonna get his PB. No, he's not. We're, we're on the Chase and Tides. Captain Chase, Nate, Kevin, Todd's with me, Dennis, Joe, Anthony, and the birthday boy, James Milano. Delaware State record. We're fishing Delaware today. 22 plus pounds, James. Yes, sir. So we'll see how we do. First time fishing here. We're leaving Ocean City, Maryland. Uh, heading north. Skunk. No, I wasn't even going to mention the skunk, Todd, man. We'll see how we do. All right, here we go, guys. And I'm in the mecca of tog fishing. Ocean City, Maryland, fishing with Captain Chase on the Chasing Tides. Mate, Kevin, you met the rest of the crew. First time for me in Maryland. And what a memorable trip. Now, I didn't get any jumbos. But we'll see why near the end of the video. A little quick recap of what you're going to see. Uh, we hit, I believe, three spots. Very picky bite. Captain Chase put in a lot of miles. We ran south first. First spot you're going to see is in Delaware. He ran for, I think, an hour and a half, maybe a little longer, to get to this spot. Um, picky bite there. Nothing big. We came back um, south, I guess. We went back south. Back into Maryland waters, hit a few more spots, progressively getting deeper. And we hit the mother load in the last hour of the trip at the last spot, but the craziest thing. Now, I've seen this before, but not to this extent. And I have a theory on it. And the, what, what happened was the, the port side of the boat, left side as you're looking forward, was whaling fish, big fish, huge fish, up to 16 pounds. Those of us on the starboard side... Nothing but dogfish. And I'll explain the theory when it happens. I'm going to borrow a piece of footage from my buddy John Skinner to try and explain it too. Um, but personally, had a great time, met some great guys, and really saw some tremendous fish caught. The big fish on this trip was 16 pounds caught by Anthony. I personally have never seen a blackfish that size caught before. So I, I would do this again in a heartbeat. I really hope you guys enjoy this video. Let me know in the comments about, you know, what I experienced, what Todd and I experienced on the on the starboard side. Has that happened to you? What's your theory on that besides us being terrible fishermen, which I am, but Todd's not. Um, as always, if you like these videos, hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber and you like content like this, please consider subscribing. And we'll cut right to the action at that first spot in Delaware. Oh, nice one. Nice one, Anthony. Thank you. Nice oh, there you go, John. He's just laying. He's just laying on it. Yeah. You were laying on it, too? That's what his did. Keeper, but does anybody want this before I chuck it? I'm not keeping fish, and I don't know if you want to keep it towards their quota. I'm fine yeah. with that, but yeah, that's fine. We'll keep and I don't care if they keep my quota either. We'll I just I don't want any. And it always seems to surprise people when I say I don't need a lot of fish. I, I don't dislike fish. I'll have it if you know once in a blue moon. But uh, between meat and fish, I will take meat any day. Pull them crabs real quick while you're up. There's some more. There's some more crabs in there. For sure, yes sir. You got a fishing card, bro. No, you're good. Just, uh, you can pass me the hook, the hooker. I'll get rid of him. 
He's small. Thank you. And yeah, the bike got really picky after this, and we uh, chugged along. We're in Delaware right now. We decide to head back up north, back into Maryland waters, and try our luck there. And I did one drop at the new spot with my VRC jigging jerks, jigging rod. Um, and yeah, one ounce was not going to hold there. So I, I switched it up to my VRC prototype tog jigger, a, a much heavier rod, more suited for heavier weights like I was going to put on. Getting slammed already with the yeah, with the rig. I got a rig fish, which is insane for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I never catch them on this. It's pumping, but I don't think it's that good. Coming up way too easy. Probably a keeper, right? It's a keeper. Oh. Do we want to keep this? Yes, we do. On the rig, toddy boy. And on the VRC. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. VRC chicken jerks rod. Oh! Oh, here he goes towards Dennis the back of the boat. Wow. Just Dennis got, is bowing! Just yeah. got here, too. Yeah, good fish. Still dropping down. I said next spot. Oh, shit. There you can go film it. Yeah. Oh, he's on, too. Go on, get over there. Go film it. The other side of the boat. The other side of the boat again. Thank you, Kat. Yeah, no, I'm joking. <laughs> A joke. I'm gonna laugh like a fucking monster on tide rod oh. over there. Okay, Anthony. Yeah, you're going. Yeah, piece that turn. Might want to go towards the back. Wow, wow, wow. This is a double. Oh, yeah. It's probably about 10. About 10, yeah. I thought it would be a lot bigger than that. Rod is bent, man. Nice, Dennis. All grab, Dennis. I thought it would be a little bigger than that, Dennis. Still big. All grab. I probably only pounds, honestly. And it was not quite 10, and I'm going to admit something a little shameful. I had no idea who Dennis was. Uh, I learned after the fact that he is one of the most well respected anglers in the Northeast, 75 years young. Great guy, great stories during all the long steams, and this was only the beginning for him. Oh, pretty good. Boxer? Keeper. All right. Is that the rod, by the way, that you set the Delaware Sky Park for? Yeah. <laughs> This will be my nice one of the day. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That'd be a fish. No. Six and a half. Seven. Wow. Wow. Kill you. <laughs> no, the farther to my left. <laughs> you got a whole crab or a half? 
uh, hole, but it got chewed up pretty good, but I dropped it back down. I didn't put a fresh one on. There was still meat in it. They took the shell off. It's a boxer. So another one for the box behind you if you guys want more. And a couple things here. That was going to be, ladies and gentlemen, the very last fish caught on the starboard or right as you're facing forward side of the boat. Uh, we are going to make one more move shortly after this fish. Uh, we're going to go really deep, I think about 125 feet. And the port side of the boat is going to absolutely have a bonanza. Double digit fish. And unfortunately, uh, the biggest fish of the trip, a 16 pounder caught by Anthony. We'll see the fish. But, uh, yeah, I had my, my camera in time-lapse mode, so I, I, I missed two or three really big fish because of that. I did get, uh, we'll see a 12-pounder caught by Dennis, but uh, the big fish of the trip and a couple of other big ones I missed. But back to the point here. Yeah, the, it, we were not fishing structure either. We were fishing an area that I think they called a kelp bed or uh, some kind of marshy area, not really rocks or a wreck and i have an idea why we couldn't really even get a bite other than a couple dogfish on the starboard side and it goes back to my friend john skinner in a video he filmed on sweeney and myself's old boat the cobia back in 2017 and let's just cut to it right now all right here's the first big lesson for me the silt i mean you saw them kicking up silt but this here, um, you're going to get to see a, a, a jig drop, and boy, but it's, it's going to be hard to make out what's going on because what's happening is they're kicking up. A, there's the drop. There it is. Um, it's going to go up and down a couple of times. This is stirring up a tremendous amount of silt. Now, we had four guys up in the boat. We had three guys on one side of the boat uh, on the, the down current side. There wasn't a lot of current, um, so the fourth guy was on the up current side. And he was catching, all, he was catching like as many keepers as the rest of the boat combined. Um, now he will tell you that it's due to his superior fishing skills, and yeah, maybe that's true. Um, at the time, we thought it was due to the structure. And I got to tell you, after watching this and watching hours of this, what I saw is this: when there was the commotion associated with fish going after a jig, it created a tremendous silt cloud, and. Yeah, you know, some of it, I mean, you, you can see here, it's it's terrible. I have clips of video where it's way worse, but then you don't see anything. Um, so I can imagine in that case where he was up current and getting a lot of action, stirring up a lot of silt, you know, he's up current in the cleaner water and we're sitting back in the silt. So could that have something to do with his productivity? Uh, I can tell you this, next time I'm in that situation, I'm going to be fishing up current. I'm going to try to stay up in that clearer water because... Uh, this just makes a tremendous mess of the water when they're feeding. And yes, that angler was me on that trip uh, who was catching all the fish. The exact opposite today. Uh, but what Skinner said, I think, is true. I, I, it had to be something with that, uh, you know, non-structure that we were fishing where perhaps it was weedy, high weeds, where our jigs and our, our rigs were getting lost in those and those guys on the other side had a little bit of room that we didn't. To the captain's credit, he explained to us that he doesn't want to move the boat um, because, and, and I agree with him 100%, they were on such a great bite. I mean, a, a, an amazing bite. Why chance that we're going to get them off the bite and they're going to be in the same position as us on some type of unproductive bottom and nobody catches? So I, I agreed with the captain. But again, my theory is, there was definitely something because forget me, I'm terrible at rig fishing, but Milan, James Milano and Todd have caught multiple, multiple double digits and we couldn't even catch a short. And the other side of the boat, literally 10 feet away, was crushing it. So it had to be something with those fish's ability to even pick up your rig down there. Um, it made me think of this Skinner video. Let's just cut right to it and, and watch some of the insanity. Wow. 
Dennis. But that didn't no, maybe a little more. Maybe 13. It didn't start. You saw it. It, but it did. It was, it was way up and it was, it was digging. Right, Dude, Dennis, hold that fish up. <laughs> that would be the thumbnail for me. We're all wrong. 12. Big 12 in the dot. There we go. 12? Wait, Dennis, let me take a picture. Oh, yeah. Words I never should have spoken. Hey, Dennis, let me get a picture. I took the picture, changed the setting on the phone, thought I changed it back to video. And no, I... I switched it to time lapse and here's dennis catching another one that pushed 10 pounds and then you see milano sidled over to that side of the boat guess what right after we get this fish out he's going to catch one that was 9.9 .9 pounds meanwhile todd and i on this side this is all we're getting it's sand sharks dogfish and the spiny kind too uh, not even the smooth ones and then the the coup de gras and apologies again it's all in time lapse mode uh anthony fishing out of the wheelhouse the window in the wheelhouse picks up the bell of the ball a 16 pounder and yeah you'll you'll see here when i realized i had it in the wrong setting so i had this in time warp but anthony <laughs> got a monster. Like a stuck pig and that's going to be the end of the video. Uh, bite died shortly after this fish. The great news, every single big fish was released. Every single one, uh, including this 16-pounder. I don't, I don't think we kept anything uh, over 8 pounds. What a wonderful first experience in Maryland. Even though I didn't get my big fish... And we were on the side of the boat at that spot where all the big fish were coming up um, and didn't get Todd and I didn't get to catch any ourselves. It, it's still memorable. Can't wait to be back to try this again. I'm being told that, you know, it gets even better than this. The water temp was still in the, I believe, 43 to 45 degree range, depending on our depth. And, and you know, to us in, in New York, they're not really biting at that at that temp. I can only imagine when it gets to 50 to 55 what the bite must be like. Uh, great job by Captain Chase and Kevin. Met a great group of guys. Had a great time. Like I said, can't wait to go back. Uh, as always, if you like these videos, hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber and you like content like this, please consider subscribing.